Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Learning with Washington University. This is Module 6, BAP Propagation Based Training. This is Part 2, where we're going to look at a BAP Propagation calculation in greater detail. Okay, as you might recall from the module that we were looking at before, just before momentum back propagation, I gave you a link that takes you to a website that allows you to perform calculations on a neural network literally as it trains. So if you click on this, it takes you to a book that I authored on deep learning. And I have in chapter six a variety of back propagation related um, applications. So we can look at uh, online or batch or um, even more advanced training techniques like resilient propagation. We're going to look at online, mainly because it's the, it's the most simple technique of those. This takes you to a page. This is all JavaScript enabled. This is something I wrote that basically lets you peer inside of a neural network and see how it see how it both calculates and how it trains. So we're teaching it the exclusive or problem. So exclusive or is an operator. Uh, it basically it's basically true when so it's a x o r b. It's basically true when a and b do not agree. If a and b do agree in value, then it's zero. So I provided a basic truth table here. If I1, so I1 and I2, those are the two sides of the, of the unary um, operator. If I1 is zero and I2 is also zero, then the output is zero because the two values agree. If they agree in the direction of one, then the output is also going to be zero because I1 and I2 are both one. When they disagree, which is where either I1 is 1 or I0 is 0, and the other one is the opposite, then it outputs a 1, um, indicating that the two values disagreed. So this is online training. You're able to, um, you can randomize the weights, or they start from sort of standard weights that I, that I make use of in the book to explain this you can calculate the input, the, but these are random weights. So the input is zero and one. So it would be this one. Should output a one. We can do calculate for input, and it shows you that it calculated a 0 0.74, which is not really a one, but it's better than being something near zero. So it's, it's moving potentially in the right direction. But you can see all of the things that go up to, to doing this. The inputs are connected by weights to the first um, layer of hidden of hidden neurons, and that's that layer of hidden neurons is connected to the output. And then you also have bias one, bias two. So you have two bias neurons that um, that are contributing. Their output is one, but they, they do have a weight. So there's a bias weight to every single neuron in the next layer. This is being calculated up by basically by basically multiplying, say, hidden one times this, hidden two times that, b2 times that, summing all of these together, and then passing that to the activation function, which in this case is sigmoid, and outputting the value for a one. So if we calculate the output again, it should always be the same because this is a completely deterministic neural network. Now when we train it, what's going to happen is these weights are going to be um, all adjusted so that these inputs will, will essentially give um, produce the correct output. So zero and one, we would really like that to output a one. We can see we can put really anything we want to into here. If we switch those, we would hope that we would get a pretty similar value. We probably won't, these are random weights. Uh, pretty similar, 0 0.75. If we make them agree, we would hope to be closer to zero. 
which we're not, we're actually higher. So some degree of training is really needed for this, um, for this neural network, for these random weights. You essentially just throw random weights at a neural network like this and then start to train it. Now the calculation here is feed forward. So calculating the input, you couldn't start calculating out here. You would have to calculate the value for hidden one by looking at all of the weights, these three weights coming into it, summing them and putting that into the sigmoid activation function, putting the value here. So this is the weighted sum for this. And then this other one is the weighted sum for all of these values. And that is, that is basically where the hidden, uh, hidden layer is, is, is coming from. Then the next thing you do is now that you have these two values, you can calculate the output and you slowly work your way up there and you, you can calculate any given input. You can also ch edit these weights too if you want to directly, if you just happen to know the weights for a perfectly trained XOR neural network, you could certainly, certainly put those in. So continuing onward, now let's look at how to train it. Now notice we have the learning rate and momentum from the previous um, from the previous part. I'm going to follow with what I have there and I'm going to move the momentum up to 0 0.9 and we're evaluating the error for the neural network using mean square error. And these are essentially all of the training elements one by one. So this is online training. So literally you would train for the first one, the 0, 0 you would calculate the um, you would calculate all of the gradients for this working backwards since you're using the the derivative the, the the chain rule and power rules we work our way backwards if we click just one of these watch the weights they'll adjust so the weights adjusted this is online training so you train for just one weight at a time and you're essentially doing this you're essentially looping through training and notice that mean square error is decreasing it trying to decrease it's not a straight path and as a shortcut i did create a button here so you can um, click and go through all of those even though you're clicking on all of these the weight is still the weights are still being updated at the end of each of those but it's just a little bit faster and you can kind of work your way down through that if it doesn't go quite as fast as you want you can decrease or if it seems like it's stuck you can decrease these so now it's going down slower whereas before it was not really going down. So now we're getting the 240s. We can probably push this a little higher. Yeah, now it's going down faster. Okay, we're into the 23s. We had not been there before. 21s, 20s. I'm probably still conservative. We could go, we could go fast. We could probably go higher. Now I'll end up messing my weights up maybe, but we'll see. So yeah, there it's going. So now we're getting pretty close to zero. We'll never actually get to zero. But this is showing you that the learning rate, the learning rate that I initially had on here was too big. You'll often, if you don't use a more advanced training algorithm that doesn't have a learning rate, you'll often decrease the learning rate as you, as you go on. So now let's look at this. We have a one and we have a one. We'll calculate the input, they agree. So now we get a value closer to, um, to zero. Zero and one, we get a value much closer to one. So this, this neural network is trained quite a bit better now. This should also be close to one. So yeah, 0 0.9. So this is, this is showing you how to actually train the neural network. Now if you go a little further down, I show you literally all of the calculations that you need to perform each of these. 
This class is very much on the application of, of deep neural networks, so I'm not going to take you through all of the math to do it, but I wrote this program to, um, to show you how to do this. This can be very useful if you are trying to write something that trains from scratch to just have something that you can check your, your math against. You should be getting all of the same values if you're trying to implement the same training algorithm that this is doing. I'll also show you batch because I do have a batch version of this. This is all very similar except now you're training a batch epoch so it will it goes through and essentially there's a lot more calculation there because each batch element it had to calculate training element one, training element two, three, and there's four of them in total because it's XOR. And then this is the final weight update. So after we've done all of this gradient calculation, you can see there's a lot of math going on. And in many machine learning classes, you'll implement from scratch a simple neural network. And this is, this is all of the math that you need to do. It's, it's in loops, that's what computers do. But um, this, this is a useful way to check your math to see if, it, if it's lining up, at least to mine, at every step. All right, and this is just showing you some of the, the various steps that the, that the program code is trying to calculate. This works very similar. You just keep training and notice it goes down maybe a little faster. It seems a little stuck right there. So when it gets stuck, you decrease this down and that tends to help sometimes. Maybe give it a little more momentum. And this is why I like training that has fewer hyperparameters. So now we're going down again. Maybe we can make that a little more aggressive. Yeah, that's, that's better. We got out of whatever local minima that we were on, I think. That's probably too aggressive. Nope. Now we're going down. So we were stuck in a local minimum. We got out of it. And this works very similar to the other, except it's batch oriented. So we eventually get to a very low error rate. And then we can try to query it. So 0 and 1 is very low. I'm sorry, 1, whoops. 1 and 1 is low. 0 and 0, that's very high. Okay, that's good. It's scaring me for a second. So those don't agree. That should also be very high, which it is. Uh, make them agree, 0 and 0. It should be lower now. And it is. So this is just an example that shows you how to how to actually calculate the values. If you're if you're really interested in knowing how to calculate every single calculation down to the down to the smallest part of a neural network this part showed you how to do that now as you can see it's it's a little bit painful having to deal with learning rates and momentums um, big neural networks i will often be dealing with learning rates more like that but it can be much more convenient to simply not have to deal with the learning rate and momentum. And in the next part, we will look at a training algorithm that does just that. It's the um, Adam update rule, and it is one of the more advanced ones. Uh, and we will see it in the next part.